In this video, we're going to cover off the uh, AI functions, how to quickly set them up. So I right click here, I'm going to go into setup, I'm going to head over to AI. So here you can see the types of detection that the cameras that we've got connected can do. So we've got face detection, human and vehicle detection, perimeter intrusion, line crossing detection, cross counting, heat map, crowd density, hue length, license plate, rare sound, stationary object, sound detection, video tampering, and then the schedule for each one. Uh, it's worth noting that only one AI can be used per camera. So if we start with sort of face detection, they're all pretty similar in how they operate. So face detection, we're going to set that up on channel one. So we're going to go with the optimal mode here. You've got three different options. You've got real time or interval. I would just keep it on the default to start with. Uh, what sort of angle are we looking at? A frontal view or multi-angle or customized? Uh, with the camera in this position, we're going to go frontal. You put your minimum pixel and maximum pixel, so that's the sort of size it can pick up. And then obviously as they move closer, so I'm going to leave that sort of 64 to 640. Face enhance, I'm going to enable. And face attributes, I'm going to enable, which will tell us whether the person's wearing glasses, things like age, etc. The detection mode, do we want to detect static or motion? So I'm going to select that to motion. The rule kind we want a rectangle or a line and the detection range i don't want it to be full screen i want to customize it into a certain area and then this is the custom area that was set and i can sort of drag these boxes around the screen if i need to and adjust it dynamic marking is will show little boxes on the screen as it's detecting so that's how you set up your face detection again with your uh, pd and vd Again in here, your snap mode, I'm going to leave it as default. Again, you put minimum pixel here, you've got your sensitivity level. I would start around 60, obviously. Going up to 100 makes it very sensitive. And what do I want to detect? Pedestrians, motor vehicles, or non-motorized vehicles, which would be push bikes, for example. So I'm only interested in those two, so I'll select that. The detection mode, do I want static or motion? I only want to know about motion. And the detection range I'm going to set as customizable, so it's in this range here. And do I want dynamic marking? Yes, I do. I can click save. Right click out of there. Perimeter intrusion detection. So here I can set a perimeter intrusion detection for pedestrians and motor vehicles. I can have multiple rules like one, two, three, and four. So I can have another region up here if I wanted to. and i've got a rule kind is it people crossing from a to b you'll see here you've got a b or do i want people going from b to a or do i want either direction and then i can save that line crossing detection in here i want to know about pedestrians and motor vehicles again i can have four different rules so i can set up four different markers like here there's one here it and one there so i've got two rules on this one and do i want dynamic marking and again which way do people need to be crossing the line to create the activation uh, cross counting again very similar so what we're we looking for that that's crossing a certain region is it a person a motor vehicle or non-motorized vehicle we can have a start time and an end time. We can reset the count because you can do statistics on it. You've got your rules again here. You can turn rule switches to turn it, turn it off and on. And which way are we interested in them traveling, A to B or B to A? Heat map is really for shops, but in here we can set a region that we're interested in. Uh, and that will show us basically like a heat map of uh, the most popular area of the store crowd density again we can set that up uh, so we can set again a region and we can enable it 
here. Few length detection again is more for shops, so we won't cover that on this video. Uh, license plate detection, we can click into here. So we've got license plate detection running on one. Uh, snap mode is default. Uh, we've got minimum and maximum pixels and sensitivities. We can select the license plate here. For the UK, just select European. Detection mode, we want to set as motion because we're not interested in park vehicles. Uh, the detection range, do we want full screen again or customised? So we can customise that area here. Do we want dynamic marking? Yes, we do. Do we want licence plate enhanced? Yes, we do. And here we can set the day level and the night level, which is to do with the lighting uh, on the camera. But if you have issues with it not detecting at night, contact support and we'll help you set that up. Rare sound detection, uh, we've got sensitivity. Um, we can select baby crying, dog barking, gunshot, whichever ones we want, and we can get an alert if one of those events occurs. Stationary object detection, we can select a region uh, and look for items left behind. So we've got sort of legacy, lost and lost in legacy here. We can turn on the rule and we can have dynamic marking. Uh, sound detection, we can turn that on and we can do either a rising sound or a declining sound in here and we'll get alerts for like people screaming out the front. Uh, video tampering, we can turn that on. That is basically if someone puts their hand over the front of the camera. Now, everything has to be scheduled. So for example, if we want to do face detection on channel one, in here we would colour in the grid. Uh, so on this particular camera, we're doing PD and VD, and we're doing that 24 hours a day. If we didn't want to run that 24 hours a day, we can just take out the times we don't want and apply. Recognition. We'll cover this a bit more on another video, but these what is what you can allow. So we can import faces into here. From the local storage which is from the cameras and we can search um, in here and up would come the faces and then we could import them in and we can do the same uh, for the block lists as well and strangers and again with license plates we can add uh, we can import license plates from the system or manually, we can import from CSV and we can import from the actual MPR. So we could search for any uh, AMPR channels and we could click search and that will bring those in. Or we can create them manually like here and import the plates. And then here we've got the alarm functions. Uh, so if somebody was on the allowed list, do we want to enable a, an alarm? What alarm do we want to enable? And we can set the similarity here. We can have the recorder buzz. We can have an alarm out. We can do the face capture, uh, send emails, picture to cloud, and we can even have voice prompt. We've got a schedule of when all again when all of this can happen. So if you don't want the alarms late at night, we can turn those off. And we can select the alarm channel. Uh, so we could have all eight channels alarming or just one if we wanted to. And then we can obviously see statistics as well. So we can search channels and we can look for face search. It would bring up all your, your faces in here. You can use it for license plate, human and vehicle. So here's the human. This is the uh, human and vehicle detection here. So you'll see it's brought some up because that's what we're running on this one. If there was perimeter intrusion, repeat visitors, and you can use face attendance as well. And I'll 
I'm just going to put that up here. So that's the very basics of setting up um, AI. And we will cover this on another video so that we can go through more in depth, uh, sort of like the license plate and face detection, because uh, we can't cover that on this video. Thank you.